In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and look at uh, the 3D Max, 3DS Max um, main toolbar, which is the area up here at the top of the screen that actually has a series of all these different graphical uh, icons. And uh, for animation one here, we're only going to be working with probably about half of them. Uh, but it's good to at least know which ones we will, and some of them we may not even work with until the last week of the semester. Uh, I will you know, let you know that uh, there are quite a few up here though that uh, are very commonly used. We begin by looking here to the left, uh, and our first three icons which are separated, there's a black line there, are ways of combining two objects or, or um, as they say linking, so you could call them the linking um, toolbars, and uh, what I'm going to do is I have a sphere here in my viewport, I'm going to make a second one and um, I'm going to quickly change that color uh, so you can see the view um, the different spheres that we have here and um, I'm going to take this first sphere and link it to the second so when you go from one to the other now I can move the first one okay which doesn't affect the second but if I take the second which I would link to that's sort of like the engine and the train all right, so everywhere that goes, no matter where I would move that or manipulate that, uh, would take that with it. Now, if I want to don't, if I want to break that, I'll click and highlight both of my objects and hit the next tool, which is the unselect. And by doing that, now these spheres will independently move without affecting the other. Okay, so link and unlink is a way we don't combine the models, but we temporarily make one follow the other. The third one over is bind to space warp, and binding to space warp is something we'll do later on. Uh, it's a way of linking um, things that are really not objects, like gravity and wind. Uh, if you want to apply those, you you don't have uh, uh, you can't physically hold gravity in your hand, so it's hard to do that. Binding is the process of doing that. Our next uh, series of icons over here are the select types. Now notice we have two spheres in our uh, picture. I can go ahead and say I want shapes. And now I can't select these objects because it's only allowing me to do a shape, which is a two-dimensional object. And we all know that spheres are three-dimensional. So this is a filter that allows you to go in and select one particular type of entity or asset in your scene without physically uh, making you have to go in and select each one. So again, that's a filter. You want to make sure you go to all uh, when you're not needing the filter. The next one's over select object. As I said in class, is sort of the most pointless of all icons because all of the other ones pretty much will select the object anyways when you want to do something with it. So it's sort of a double redundant. However, the next one is select by name. And when you open that, you'll see that every object in your scene um, will, will show up here so you can select and uh, this is important so I don't know which one's sphere uh, 001 or 002 but if I was to name this gold sphere purple sphere I would know exactly which one I needed hit OK and it would select that one we also have the rectangular rectangular selection region where uh, all you have to do is click and drag a window around the objects you want as long as it's touching both will be selected or anything in between that that window uh, if you hold down on that icon as well as any other icon in Max that has that little triangle in the corner, you'll see that there are multiple types of selections. So if I go to the circular, I come out here, notice that it has it lets me uh, take a circular region to select. And that automatically overwrites um, as a default. So you can go back and make sure if you use rectangular marquee that you reset that. Next is the window crossing, and the way uh, that works pretty much by default is if I just barely touch this sphere with the window, it will select. Now if I go back and change this, I have to select the entire object be around it for in order for it to, to select. So um, that may or may not help you out later on. Move tool does just that. You select an object, you can go ahead and move it. Now there are different ways of moving objects. The first is to constrain an object so it moves in one axis, keeping it nice and, 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 and in line. You do that by selecting on the colored arrow on the end of the transform gizmo. And by holding the arrow, that moves the sphere in one plane 
uh, but keeps it constrained so it, it, it can go in one straight line. And you can do that with all these other different uh, views as well. If you want to freely move the sphere along that plane, you pretty much need to uh, click down in this spot of the uniform gizmo, which will allow you to freely move in that, that particular plane you're working in. Now notice in the front it stays level, but in the top I can move it anywhere I want. Now the, uniform, the transform gizmo is, uh, it only shows up when you select an object or multiple objects it'll center between the two but the transform gizmo um, if you hit X on your keyboard will disappear and if you do this by accident all you have to do is have to hit X again on your keyboard and that will make it come back now I'm gonna go ahead and bring a box in here and the only reason I'm gonna do that is because when you rotate a sphere you really can't see it. it's rotating but if I take my rotate tool which is the next one in line that allows me to rotate this box in one plane. Now if you'll notice as I use the inner circle that gives me uh, an actual degree but it's, it's actually breaks it down in segments of a degree. So if you want to rotate something at a neat 45 degree angle it's going to get very frustrating. So I did show you guys over here the angle snap toggle tool. So I'm going to edit undo so my box is straight again turn on the angle snap toggle now when I rotate it rotates in exact five degree increments so if I bump something and say oh I need to straighten that I can go click 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 and there we go it's straight and I don't have to sit there for a long time playing around with it when you rotate with the outer uh, wheel you don't get a degree but it pretty much does the same thing now you can also rotate uh, in more than one axis notice how when I um, I put my uh, mouse over the this line it turns yellow if I click I can actually rotate in that axis as well it's also telling me it's in a 90 degree angle okay. and just like the transform gizmo for move if you hit X it goes away hit X it comes back finally we have scale and scale uh, there's two different ways to scale you have scale uniform and scale non-uniform scale uniform would be where you take the scale tool and actually pick the center point of the transform gizmo hold your left mouse down drag left to make it smaller or right to make it bigger now you're not adding to the complexity of the mesh uh, you're simply proportionately changing the size of this object all sizes are staying proportion a non-uniform scale is when you use the little handles here represented by the different colors where you click and drag up and down and that will give you uh, a scale in one direction so you're changing the size and the shape of the object now remember I, I mentioned in class that uh, if you have a very large model and you're concerned about file size scaling a model down does not necessarily mean you're going to save file size um, it's it really doesn't have a factor there I'm gonna jump over a couple icons here and uh, we're going to see the mirror tool. And the mirror, the mirror tool, if you select and nothing selected, you're going to get an error message. So you have to physically go out and select this object, hit mirror, and it's going to ask you a series of questions. What axis do you want to flip this over? Do you want to do it on the X, the Y, or the Z? Okay, and a box isn't very fancy, but when you start using uh, weirder shapes, you'll see that. Now you also have the option to clone, which means you'll make a second copy uh, mirrored from it like you're looking at yourself in the mirror. Copy will make that, no clone will give you just flipping it. Clone, copy will clone it over to the other side. Uh, and then instance will make a copy of it, but that instance will be manipulated the same way the original one would. So if you were to make a change to the first one, the second one would update. And we'll play a lot more with the mirror command in one of our first um, uh, modeling lessons here. You'll learn how, how, it benefits, uh, how it benefits you. To mirror, hit OK. Uh, skip a couple more icons over here and we're briefly going to look at the material editor. It's the sphere that has like the checkerboard pattern on it. Uh, if you hit that on your screen, 
you'll get one of two boxes. If you get this one here, this one is actually the Slate Material Editor, a very complex version of uh, the material editing software that Max comes with. Uh, we will not use this in Animation 1. Uh, we may experiment with it later at the end of the semester, but very likely we will not be using it because of the complexity. Close that out, hold down on that icon, and you'll see another one that has a smaller uh, area in it. Like I said, it looks like a Game Boy. That is the, um, the compact material editor. Okay, um, and that is the one that we will be using with. It's very uh, easy to bring in images and apply them to do 2D images into 3D shapes. So we'll close that for now and we'll be seeing that in week five. Finally, we have the last three of our icons that we're going to cover in the main toolbar. The first one is the render setup, next is the render frame window, and then we have to render that production. When you select the render production, the current viewport will render. So I'm going to select perspective, hit the teapot, and I have a rendered version of my work. Now, the first time you hit render, it will not save it. It's just saved in the cache of the computer pretty much. Um, there's no way to print this or, or view it uh, outside of Max. In order to do that, you simply need to go and go to the render setup button. By hitting Render Setup, you're going to see several different um, things that we'll be working with throughout the semester. The three that I want you to focus on under the Common tab is the Time Output. Your very first couple renderings will all be singles, still frames. You would be using range for animations. Output Size. What size is the final rendering? The larger the output size, the longer the rendering time, but the the bigger the picture will be, the better the printable version it will be. Your still renderings are 2300 by 1730, I believe. So this is where you would make that change. I also need you to set the render output, probably the most important of all. If you do not do this, it will not save the file, regardless if it's a steel or an animation. So your render output is affected uh, by hitting the file button coming out, setting the location where the rendering will end up, the name of the file, and what type of file it is. For instance, we'll be using JPEG for our stills. And you will hit Save. And then, after you do that, hitting Render will render that box out at the right size. But now you could go out and find that file and view it in, in uh, Photoshop or anything like that. All right, so that is the Render button. Now, the other, other one that's in the middle, simply opens up your previous rendering. It doesn't re-render. So if you make a change, for instance, I go in here and I orbit my viewport to change my view here, and I hit that button, I still have the original rendering. I would have to actually hit the Render Production button in order to change that, Okay, which I'll do there. That concludes our uh, brief introduction to the main toolbar. We'll be using these tools extensively, where uh, I will give you more information on them as we move along. Uh, our next focus will be on the panels to the right and how to create some basic shapes. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you in class next time.